All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome you all to the first session of uh, Style in uh, 2022, 2023 academic year. Um, I'm really happy to see you all. And as you know, SoCal Tamil Youth Leadership and Entrepreneurship is a youth empowerment initiative from the SoCal Tamil nonprofit organization. And we conduct various sessions, workshops for our students community in entrepreneurship, leadership, volunteering opportunities, public speaking, technology, learning, and so many areas, right? And uh, thanks, uh, and really I'm, I'm, welcome, I'm welcoming all the students who join, who, who, who join the style session first time today. And uh, as you know, uh, I'm Saravanan, and um, also we have Mr. Prabhu, uh, the coordinators of the style program. Um, one of the key areas that our program has been focusing is to improve the financial literacy in our uh, students, right? And uh, this is one of the great sessions which focus on improving the financial literacy. And they've got amazing personalities as the guest speakers today. And on behalf of STYLE, the SoCal Tamil uh, Kalvi team and SoCal Tamil uh, organization team, I welcome you all to this wonderful session. And let's move on to the agenda. Introduction and housekeeping, which, which is me, and I'm doing that right now. And chief guest introduction and welcome address. We have uh, um, Ms. Mahati Prabhu, uh, who's volunteering today to deliver the welcome address and to introduce the chief guest. And then we're going to learn a lot from Mr. Sampath and Mr. Uh, Shankar. And we are going to have a lot of fun activities like quiz and question and answer session. And the word of thanks, uh, Ms. Uh, Wali Nachepan has volunteered to deliver that uh, for the uh, entire team. And some of the housekeeping announcement very quickly, as you know, we'll be uploading this uh, recording uh, in our SoCal Tamil organization YouTube channel to benefit the students who can make it today. And um, it's completely voluntary for you to, you know, turn on the video and, um, uh, and in interact. But we welcome you to interact more. Um, and consider considering the sheer amount of topics to be covered in the personal finance for our sessions, our guests speakers, you know, they plan to uh, split it and have two, two sessions. And we highly encourage you to join uh, both sessions. One is today, the other one is on um, October 22nd um, and get benefit out of it and ask more questions at the end and, uh, and make it more interactive. And please mute your, yourself when you're not speaking. And there is definitely a quiz in, in between and there's a lot of interesting uh, things happening here. And feel free to send your questions in the chat box also. We'll be monitoring that and go over at the end. And um, Ms. Um, Mahati Prabhu, a freshman in uh, Sunny Hills High School, will be delivering a, um, a welcome address. And before that, we would like to just quickly see what's the quote of the day. You know, we, we start with the quote of the day. And um, let's do that quickly. Uh, I know people who see this uh, first two lines think, oh my gosh, we are in a Tamil class. Oh, again, no, <laughs> don't worry about that. So it's going to be very quick. For so I'm going to take reference from two investors um, to, to define what is going to be the quote of the day. And one investor is, you know, who, is, who has given a lot of very useful information for us about personal finance 2000 years ago. And another investor who is living with us and who is the you know, guru of uh, modern investors. So let's, let's see what the first person said. So it's Kural number 753. Don't worry about it. I'm going to tell the meaning, okay? I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> the imperishable light of wealth goes into regions, regions desired by its owner and destroys the darkness. So, Porul enum anaya vilak matum kayil erundu vital ninai teedathir kichendru yirul enum tunbatte turatti vidam mudi kirade. So, I I leave the rest to you to understand and grasp what uh, Thiruvallur said. So, this is Thiruvallur, right? And um, I'm referring him as you know. Uh, one of the great investors, and he invested in our uh, the entire community, the Tamil community development and you know growth in his mind. All right, so moving on to the next investor, the modern investor, do not save what is left after uh, spending, but spend what is left after saving. Who's that? <laughs> That's Mr. Warren Buffett, and he's an you know he's an American uh, business magnate, investor, and philanthropist. And also uh, one of the most successful investors, and he's the guru for many of the modern investors. And let's move on to the next section. 
to welcome our chief guest, I would like to call upon Ms. Uh, Mahati Prabhu from Freshman. Uh, he's, she's a freshman, freshman in uh, Sunny Hills High School, Fullerton, and also she graduated from Brea, Tamil Kalvi last year. I will go to the next slide. Um, yeah. All right, um, Mahati, over to you. Welcome and hello, everyone. Thank you all for joining the Fall 2022 Style Session on Financial Literacy. Today, let's welcome our guest speakers, Mr. Sampat Narayanan and Mr. Shankar Kupusami. Um, Mr. Shankar, Mr. Sampat Narayanan is a Chief Information Officer at Everside Health and is the, part of the Healthcare Product Advisory Council at the Salesforce. He is also a guest lecturer and mentor at UC Irvine, the Paul Mirage School of Business, and he holds an MBA in Strategy and Global Business from Said Business School from the University of Oxford. Mr. Narayanan also holds a Bachelor's in Engineering from the National Institute of Technology, Technology in Tiruchirappalli. He lives in Irvine, California, and is the founder and president of Aram Community. Mr. Narayanan was the former vice president of Sokal Tamil Kalvi and was the form, part of the former executive board of directors in Sokal Tamil. Our next guest speaker is Mr. Shankar Kupusan. Mr. Kupusami is a senior programmer and analyst in Lab Laboratory Co Corporation of America and has 20 plus years of experience in IT industry. He has 30 plus IT projects experience in Java and Microsoft technologies and holds masters of computer application from Indira Gandhi University. Mr. Kupusami lives in Irvine, California and is a Tamil grade eight teacher in Sokal Tamil Kalvi in Irvine. He was the former pr principal in Sokal Tamil Kalvi in Irvine and he is a strong believer in community building. Mr. Kupusami has 300 plus hours of volunteering every year in education and sports field. Now let's give a warm welcome to our guest speakers. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Mahati. Let me stop sharing and over to you, Sampath and Shankar. Thank you. Thank you, Saraman. Thank you, Mahati. Let me share my screen. Um, with, tell me if you can see um, the PowerPoint. Yeah, we can see that. Yeah. So um, let me walk through what we are going to do today and why we are doing this, right? Let me put it in. Slideshow mode. Can you guys still see the screen? Yeah, yeah. okay. Good. So um, that's Sampat Narayanan, that's myself, and I have my friend Shankar. We're going to join hands to uh, present to you today. Um, thanks to Sukhasni Sampat, who helped create quite a lot of these slides, right? So what, why are we doing this? Why, why suddenly Finance 101 or why, why suddenly a fin Finance? Uh, by the way, does anybody know what is 101? Can you, if you guys know, put it in the chat window. What, what is why 101? What do you mean by 101? If any of you know, put it in the chat window. Meanwhile, so why are we doing this? Um, finance is a very important part of our life. We are, you know, as you, you know, you're all in schools, as you, you know, look for future years, as you grow up to a college and, a, and, and work and future, finance becomes a very important part of how you manage your personal life and how you build your wealth, right? And it's not generally taught in schools. You, we learn math, we learn science, but finance as a concept is not taught in science, not, not taught in schools. And I tried this with my daughter and she was able to appreciate it. That's why we said we can probably take this to a larger set of teammates and we said, uh, or set, set of students. And it's specifically made for middle and high school uh, kids and, and homemakers. What do I mean by that? We try to make it as simple and as light as possible. We've tried to keep it as easy to learn we have a storyboard you will see, you know, and hopefully you guys can you know, uh, understand it easily, right? So we try to keep it very, very foundational and, and understanding. What are we going to cover? We're going to cover just about US finance, it, and it's specifically going to be about personal finance. How do you manage your own personal finance as you, not, not only now, as you grow up? It's going to be day-to-day -day finance needs. Uh, we are not covering big topics like investments and insurance and retirements. We wanted to cover that, but we wanted to start slow. So we are taking uh, baby steps here, right? So in future, we may talk a little bit about that, but not covered in these sessions. We're going to do this in two sessions. Today is foundation. That's what you're going to see. 
we have another another session as a follow up that's a uh, best practices session that will come on 22nd of october even today's session we are going to divide this into two uh, uh, shankar is going to take the first session at the end of the first session we have a trivia uh, saravanan will will run the trivia and then i'll take the second session um, and we'll have a trivia at the end of that as well and i want to be and i want to make sure this is as educational as possible right that's the whole reason we are doing this so feel free to ask questions feel free to if you don't know anything that's perfectly okay right that's why we are we are trying to do this it is it is okay to not know there's no no stupid questions right so feel free to ask in the chat window at the end we'll also have some time for q and a and you guys can ask those questions we believe this will be about an hour or hour and hour and 10 minutes and we'll have some time a 5 10 minutes at the end for q and a as well so that's the high level background of what we are going to do everybody happy with that yes all right let's go to the session and shankar is going to um, start the first session let me stop my sharing now all right thank you sampat um i am going to share my screen hope you guys are seeing my screen yeah okay awesome let me bring my notes ready all right so for next 30 minutes right um i'm going to talk to you guys about what are the important pieces in the personal finance right so it is the reason it's called 101 that is a reason right wherever you go people will show the number 101 101 101 most of the guys are asking what is 101 right something people who know it's 101 is nothing but it's a, it's an introductory nothing but a very beginning right wherever you go to the college there will be a number called 101 right what is mean one the first number is stands for something like a first year and 01 is the first course or introductory course when people says 101 it is completely fine you don't need to have any knowledge about the particular product or the uh, the topic which you have to learn about so that's why people people call it as 101 so you will be learning from the scratch it's as sampar just said it's okay to ask a funny questions or a nonsense question because that's how you learn right it means not intentionally nonsense questions but you should not have a thought of okay do we really need to can i ask this question so that's the first thing so you have to come out of right so let's jump into the session right okay all right so as uh, sample uncle just said that we are going to talk to some story board right so we are into the business and we are in working with this so that's it's a day in day out we will always talk about stories right in the personal experience what's happening kind of things so let's meet lakshmi right here so Lakshmi is a first year at UCI and she is a 19 year old. Why I am specifically saying it's a 19 year old? I'll get, I'll get back to you on this. So when she is studying part of their uh, um, academic, she started uh, looking for a job in part time and she got a job at Magdi. And uh, the manager offered the letter to her, right? Okay, you got a job here. So first thing you have to do is you have to go open a bank account. Why? So that she can deposit her monthly check. Magdi is going to provide a monthly check to her so that she can cash the check, right? She can get money out of it. So she gave a check because you cannot take the check and go use it for any, any of your expenses, right? So for that, she needs to open a bank account. So the next day morning, she's walking to the nearby bank and started inquiring about how to open a bank account or what is a bank account what needs to be done right so that's how we all starting right we don't know how anything right you have to walk into bank account and do so why it is 19 because in in the united states right so if you wanted to open a bank account to yourself you have to be minimum 18 right so i choose 19 here so if you wanted to open a bank account before 18 you need to go with your parents or a, a, a person who can uh, vouch you for, right? So you cannot do that. So after 18 or 18 or after, you can go to the bank account and you can open it yourself. 
first thing what they will ask you is when you go hey i wanted to open a bank account can you tell me more about bank account what needs to be done kind of things they will ask you three important informations right so first of all if you wanted to open a bank account what they will ask you is you need to be have a proper uh, tax id number or a social security number so when you born here obviously you will have a social security number or if you are a immigrant you are coming from a different country you can start with tin then eventually you will be having a social security number so you need to have this one of this wherever financial institute you go in united states right you have to have one of these number so that they can track and associate with you obviously id proof right so where you are living and they it's a proof that you are eligible to have open a account for yourself so this two information is will be taken from you right and there is a law in united states they will protect this information highly confidential because these are all very sensitive information right so what if somebody uh, steal this information right so there are a lot of things so you could have to keep certain information very protected so one of that information is your identity and you should not use your um social security number or a tax id number you can share it to the financial institutions or you can share it to the some of the uh, uh, tax consultant where you are filing your annual uh, tax returns uh, which is not you not there reached yet but this information is okay plus they will ask you to bring some money to you so that they can open a account they can put that money that's a very minimum basic things so lakshmi provided her okay i have my social security number and this is my uh, um, she she happened to have a, a driving license so she shared her number and she 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 uh, she has some 50 dollars cash in her with her so they are explaining this information and she started asking questions to the person who is explaining all these things in front of her right the bank manager or somebody is right why we need checking account right what is the necessity for this right so first of all so you will get money right so you will get money from your parents your piggy banks you will start saving right so one point of time you cannot save more right what happens is maybe you can save few hundred dollars or something like that but after this what happens is you will be scared about losing that money for various reasons right the safety is one of the aspect right it it needs to be protected right and i i need to handle this money whenever i want right these are all the basic criteria when you are keeping money it's not going to grow or it's not going to keep safe when you are putting a money in a piggy bank or inside the shoe box or in the pillow it's never going to grow right so it's always it first of all you need to protect your money it needs a safety right so you need to have a bank account where you can uh, move your all your incomes and uh, uh, the money you are having that is the very first step right so this brings a financial stability wherever you go if you ask any person who are dealing with money in this america they have minimum checking account this is a basic first entry point for your personal finance so you have to have a checking account right that's a basic first step right what happens right once this is once they open the checking account right what they will do is right once this formalities are done they will ask they will tell you okay this is a very low interest rate low interest rate means you cannot get more interest when i say interest means if you keep money for more for certain period they will give you some token of appreciation okay you kept this money with us for a while okay i'm going to give you some interest right that's called interest so that interest is very low in checking account because checking account is not meant created for earning more interest it's it's created for handling your money because when you are keeping your cash you can take that money you can go to the grocery shop buy it you can go to another vending machine you can buy it right you can go to a gas station put a gas right you can you can use this uh, uh, cash or money maybe 10 12 times a day and how many times you can you can you can you can keep on um, you use that money right it's a similarly for that purpose right instead of keeping that money in with you there is a, another way where we can keeping money in the safely and secured manner 
and you can do whatever you wanted to do it through various means to, to various means right so that's what so transactions are rarely limited you can do numerous transactions numerous withdrawals numerous deposit you can do right so that's what paying bills whatever it's talking about is right I, you have various expenses in your day-to-day -day activity which we are going to see in the further slides so once they explain all these things they reached a state that a checking account has been created for uh, Lakshmi, right? They provided all the information. They were happy and they created an account and they put the $50 in the bank. Now she, Lakshmi has a $50 in her checking account. So after that, they, they said you, she will be getting a debit card. What is a debit card? We are going to talk about this. To access your money, right? through various means like an ATM or if you want to take, uh, use this card to spend in a different location, right? They will give you a debit card. Debit card is nothing but wherever the amount you, you have in your checking account, you can withdraw that money wherever you want. That's the, you, you will be using a debit card and they will be a checkbook. Checkbook is nothing but I'm going to talk through about checkbook. I have a physical copy as well to show you guys more. So, there is a checkbook they will give. They will give this two information, right? So in today's world, right, everything is online, right? So this checking and savings principle or whatever accounts principle is there even before internet era, right? So it's there for uh, almost uh, 40, 50 years or maybe more than that, right? Maybe 60 years maybe, right? So before that, there is no um, internet, right? But now we have an internet. So you can do all this Along with the physically you go do this, you can also deal everything through online. So they will set up an online account. So when you go to the bank, if you open a checking account, they will provide all this information to you. So Lakshmi happened to open an online account as well. So we are going to, in the further slides, we are going to see more information about it. All right. So somebody asked me one day, what is checking? What I'm doing is checking. Why can't they name it differently? What is checking means? So as I told you, right, before like a 60, 70 years, this is bank three transaction happening. That time to move a cash or to a move money from one location to another location, they carry a physical check leaf like this, okay? This check is called a check. This is a check book. Whatever you're saying is check book. This is one leaf is called check, right? So this check is named, this check is named, this checking account is named after this leaf called check. This is called check in account. So today that we are not using check more, right? But eventually that's how the, the industries are, the financial industries, do we need to really name this as a checking kind of things as division is going on? But no matter what, we are calling it as a checking account because it's named after this check leaf. That's how it is called checking accounts. Obviously, saving is different, right? It's, it's, it's going to be saving, right? So that's how she opened a checking account, right? And when Lakshmi is talking all these things, right? They also, the bank manager told her, right? Okay, so since you open a checking account, you are already eligible to open a savings account. They told her, right? Am I open to have a uh, uh, savings account? Yeah, I do, right? Can you tell me more about savings account? It's a savings account is pretty much similar to checking account where you can keep the money, right? As is, you can have the money, right? But there are some, some restrictions or regulations in the savings account. What are those, right? So you cannot have a debit card or checkbook will be given to the savings account because it's a savings account. It's named is save, right? You have to save the money, right? So where when you are moving a money from a checking to saving or you are depositing a money directly to the saving account, right? So they don't offer you a debit card or a checkbook, right? And since they didn't, they are not providing any debit card or a checkbook, right? It is not a good place to pay bills because the transactions are very limited here right they will try to limit the transactions when you are withdrawing so when you pay bills you happen to take money right so you are going to gas station you are going to grocery store you are going to dinner place you are uh, maybe you want to send a uh, um, you went to movie theater or you want to send a money to your uh, 
your friend uh, all this is happening in one day the the entire uh, savings accounts today i think bank of america for example is allowing only six transactions in savings account if i'm not wrong right then this will reach in half a day right it's not going to happen then they will charge you money for this because checking account not meant for that it's, sorry savings account is not meant for this checking account is meant for all this numerous transactions whereas savings account you keep the money in such a way right you can grow it and since it's a growing purpose they provide a little extra interest than the checking account where you can get an extra interest rate right so you will get an extra little over extra money you keep the same money between checking and savings account at the end of the year you will see little extra money in your savings accounts than your checking account so that's how it works and it has a limited play so how are they giving so technically i'm not going to deep dive into savings but they will use this money to uh, lend to different peoples so they earn money and from that earning they will give you some uh, money to you that's how the saving principle works right and why we keep the savings account it's mainly for our emergency funds or if you wanted to have to achieve your short term goal right say for example hey i wanted to um, so i am depositing my mon monthly uh, megd uh, salary set here and what you will do is after after end of the month whatever expenses i am done i move my my savings to my savings account and it will slowly grow right and over the period of time after maybe say after a few months right maybe six months or five months or maybe in a year you can start buying a phone so that kind of a process Oh, can't I buy phone from your checking account? You can, but the path or the process is defined. What is the purpose of saving accounts is to for your future goals or for, for emergency. So this is the the this is how the whole the savings account and banking accounts constructed. So since Lakshmi got all this information with her, then she realized that okay, let me open a savings account as well because. i wanted to buy a new phone for me maybe down the road maybe 6 months or 8 months okay because september iphone is releasing today is something like a date where i wanted to save for next 6 months let me buy an iphone so she set up her checking and savings account right so let's go to the next slide all right so as as i told in the previous slide they provided a mobile banking right so obviously our most of the transactions are we carry because it's very hard for every day to go to the bank and check the balance or go to the atm put the debit card in the atm so that i'm going to talk about all these terms right in the later point of view because when we are having a debit card there are multiple ways you can spend this using debit cards right i am going to talk about this and sampat uncle slides is going to talk about more in the mobile banking right what it happening is it's like a internet banking okay you keep everything in your when you when you say mobile it's happen to be mobile because the internet is so popular and we started building the mobile uh, we, we, were, we were in an era right we were in a period where there was no tv then tv came then slowly technology came then there is a a uh, pager came then the mobile came the mobile without having a smart screen so we came through all this phase right so it's it's named after how it grown right so it's called mobile banking it could have been wait you what do you mean by mobile banking i mean i can't see this in in uh, uh, in laptop or tablet it's not mean that which mobile banking means you can have it handy a device can have your account wherever you are going you can carry your things you no need to wait for a atm store or a bank to check your things it is instant so that's what it's about so she can check the balance transfers statements you can pay bill while you are traveling or you can it's a handy while in the while in the couch you can do lot of things you can set up a account you can do lot of things that's what it's mobile banking stands for right so when they are set uping this right you have to be very careful right when you when comes to finance the very important thing is safety you wherever you go keep this in mind finance is back side, back of your mind if you turn yourself and see the finance you need to be very safe it's okay to keep money in your hand but what happened you lost the money right so it's very important we earn the money also it's it's more important to keep the money safe right so how do we keep the money safe 
right? So it will be protected, right? So when you are having an online bank, right? Nobody cannot just hack your mobile and uh, transfer this. It's again, right? It's it's there. There are various ways. So people's and uh, the banks will protect using multiple ways, right? So they will provide an user ID password or they will provide a biometric where fingerprints face recognition. There is a two-factor authentication. Most of it is no, right? A lot of gaming apps or all this already started providing. You guys are more familiar than us. What is two-factor authentication? You will log in as well as there will be a notification or a pin code sent to your email or your mobile where you can confirm that, okay, I'm the person who is trying to access. Then bank will come some, okay, it looks like you are Lakshmi. Then you can access your information because just I wanted to confirm, right? So if somebody have your uh, information, but the two-factor authentication, what forces you will get the notification in your mobile, you will realize that, hey, I didn't attempt this. Somebody attempt this. You can immediately can call the bank and tell them, hey, I didn't get this device. Can you lock my account? They will lock your account time being. Then they will make sure you are protected, right? So that's what company does. So... So the mobile banking is one of the important future where uh, you can have your bank or cash always travel with you. That's called mobile. It's 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 roaming around. It's portable, right? So it's it's the screenshot looks like something is um, uh, relevant, right? I'm, I will be talking more about Zelly in the later sites. Okay, this is called mobile bank. So Lakshmi now has a, a checking account, right? She has a saving account and also have a debit card, checkbook, along with the online bank, right? Online banking, we call it as online banking, or some people scale mobile banking. It's all in the same. All right. So next one is, now she opened everything. Okay, now she started living, right? She started living the campus. She is going to UCA. She is studying whatever that uh, 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 vertical she is studying. Now she has to face the daily expenses she's making. What kind of, hey, I owe a friend of $20. I have to pay rent on my location. I need, I'm, I'm cooking on myself. I need to buy grocery or chips or biscuits, whatever I'm doing. I have to share my electricity bill. I have to send money to my, uh, my parents or grandma. So all this kind of uh, common expenses Lakshmi is going to face or face going to face, right? So how this are all possible how how is how she is going to handle all these things that's what let's go let's see one after other right all right so obviously you guys know okay what are the ways to handle an expense you have a cash yes that's how i go my mom gave piggy, piggy bank i go i gave uh, on wednesdays there will be a pop pop popsicle truck i'll pay i take a money from my pocket that's that's how you do right so when you grow, right, you can still use a crash, but in the in a wider range, right, where you can lend money to your friends or paying money to your friends if somebody is asking, right. You can go to the gas station. All this, this is one way of paying that's easily known, right. Second thing is about personal checks. What is a personal check? Go back to two slides before when Lakshmi opened her checking account, right. They gave a debit card plus a check leaf or checkbook. Normally, bank charges check for checkbooks. But initially, since you open an account, they will give you um, a free checkbook of 20 or 50 leaves. It depends on where you're opening an account. And uh, this personal check, you will be using normally to pay, right? So normally, you, 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 you are in the schools, right? You might be, uh, your parents will be giving a check to your PTAs, right? Where for your t-shirts or for your trips or whatever it is. So that's that's how it works, right? If I have to pay to a, a different organization or a person itself, right? Because if I know, if I have to pay to my friend who I know, right? I have his bank details, I can transfer it or I can have other means. But if I have to pay to some like organizations, we'd normally use checks, right? I have to donate something or I have to pay to an organization, etc. We are going to use check. We are going to see and another slide in detail about checks, debit cards. Debit cards, they will give you something like, a, obviously you might have seen this, right? So you might have seen card like this. So this will be given by the bank and it will be secured one, right? So what is the use of debit card? Obviously, you know, I, I have my money, right? My check, my I deposited maybe $100 and I'm, I'm depositing my monthly 
paycheck like a 750 bucks so it is 850 bucks now i wanted to go to movie and watch it so you can go inside the uh, counter and you can give the debit card and they are going to charge right so that is one way of saying and you can withdraw money in the close by atm atm is automated teller machine teller means who handles the cash now the person is teller so it's teller machine right so it's a machine handles the cash so debit card is meant for uh, uh, to handle your cash, you handle your money like a cash, right? You can withdraw cash or you can use this for various purposes. You can go to grocery, buy it. They will ask for a pin number. You can type it. It depends, right? You will learn about uh, debit card and credit card in the later sites. And bank transfers. Bank transfers is you can pay. You can pay to your electricity, right? You have, uh, say, Southern California Edison. Um, uh, you wanted to pay it automatically on every month of uh, every every month fifth fifth of every month. You have to pay. Uh, you have to pay to uh, uh, gas, or you wanted to do whatever, or you wanted to save money. Also, that's called bank transfer. You can transfer your money by ad hoc or through an automated recurring means. You can transfer the money. Hey, can you can you pay to Southern California every month fifty dollars? or vice versa, Southern California also pull money from your uh, account, but that's a different note, but you can transfer money between an account. Your friends has an has account in a different bank, you want to transfer money or you want to get a money. So all these are really bank transfers. These are online payments, right? Venmo, Zelly, PayPal. We are going to talk about all these things. It's, it's all third party. These are all the, uh, it's not our bank where you're opening an account, but they can work with your bank and make things easy for you, right? When you say make things easy for you is, it's an app where you can just, yeah, you can, you can just pay free, right? In one click, in two clicks, you can send the money to this. It's a, it's a, it's an easy processing, right? You know, you need to do four or five level steps to pay something, right? It's an easy money processing. It's an online payment system. We are going to quickly walk through about this. And the last one is grandma since she's in India, you can also do a wire transfer. What is a wire transfer? If you wanted to transfer a money in a one place to another place in a fast and uh, secured way, right? Say if you are talking about $50 or $100, that's fine because the wire transfer sometimes charges even $30 for the transfer. So the money is uh, securely transferred. And uh, if you wanted to transfer, say $3,000 to your grandma, right? So that's the safest way it will reach in in few hours or something like that. Maybe maybe one or two days, depends on the where you are doing it. So these are all the slides. You can uh, see that. So what are a few things? Let me quickly walk through, right? So personal checks, if you give a personal checks, it takes about one or two days to clear, right? So again, the debit card, it's it's a draw for a draw from your bank. Bank transfers, you can transfer it between your accounts or auto pay, you can do it. So Venmo, Zelly, PayPal, it's a third party is where you can have access to your account, right? And you can transfer between that. So it's easy hanging, right? Then it's a wire transfer. So again, it's if you want to transfer to, to a place where it's a safe and securely, you can't transfer, you can go for wire transfer. All right. So I'm going to quickly talk about personal check. I'm going to talk about bank transfers and Zelly, right? On this is, then I will, I will, I will uh, wire transfer is not covered in this. So let's talk about one debit card will be covered by Sampatankar, right? So this is how it's check, right? So you see check here. So this is how you get a check. So it's very important check in account checks, right? This is checks. So this is how it physically checks looks. It says your name and where you located, right? That will be printed here. And second thing is it's obviously date. So this is something you will be writing. Okay, I'm giving a check on today right? To who? Pay in order. So you can say your school name, PTA, or your friend name, or organization you wanted to give, or the grocery store is accepting check, you can write the grocery store name and give, right? Say, you have to ask them, how, how do you want me to write a check for, right? Favor to what? So you have to ask them, you should not assume that their name is John, but his name is Jonathan, you cannot write John, something like it. If you have, to, if his account name is Jonathan, you have to write oh, Jonathan. Or if it is you are writing to the uh, uh, ABC Water Company, you can have to write like ABC Water Company. It's it act, it needs to be exactly same how it is in their account and how much money you wanted to put and uh, 
in words it's always to keep this number very clear right so if i didn't put this dot properly the number is different right it may not be it's eleven thousand fifty two dollars if it is it's very very important when you write a check the decimal place and the sense needs to be very clear that is the reason they are giving this you have to explain this so whenever you are writing a check right try to write in a letter where it's readable by anybody right so don't uh, like a, a prescription uh, given by a doctor or something today is not in the ha handwritten right most of the prescription is coming online or uh, it printed but don't write like a uh, uh, where nobody can read it right you have to write properly right and you have to write and 52 by 100 cents so this way they know this is a decimal place and it is otherwise it would have been 11,052 right you have to be very careful when you are writing and why you are writing and you see your signature this are all the important information from your side if you see there are actually three parts right uh, one is already provided here check number if you see this check there are three parts here right normally this last part is the check number here 5719 though you can say this is a check number and this part whatever you're seeing all one here that is your account number that's your account number. The account number is something like this, right? If you see this, this is an account number, right? There is a 306. I am not sure how many people are seeing, but 306 is here. This is your account number, right? Where whenever you open a checking account number, there will be an account number, like a 10 to 12 digit account number will be there, right? That is your account number that belongs to Lakshmi, right? And there is an another nine digit number, or it may be 10 digit number, next to your left side of your number account number is called a routing number the routing number is very important because this is a chest of paper right and it says something you have to pay to abc water company and the amount will be debited right when you deposit this check right when somebody you are giving this check to rbc water company they will put this into their bank what they will do is first thing they forget about all these things they will check what is the routing number the routing number is the number where your bank is it's like you can say that routing number is your bank account number you can say that so how in a bank there are hundreds of uh, thousand people will be having an account right and these are individually uh, uniquely identified similarly there are number of banks or number of organization, number of financial institutions is, is having uh, tied up with federal, right? They are having, you can open account in any bank, right? You can, you can open account in 10 different banks. That's different, right? But how do they identify, okay, you have to take the money and transfer to ABC Water Company from which router, right? Which is a which bank. So they will identify this bank. See, you can, you can print whatever you want here. You can print name here. It cannot specify which bank it is, but this routing number, it is identified. Oh, you open an account in Wells Fargo. You, oh, you open an account in Chase. Oh, you open an account in a Bank of America. Oh, you open an open account in a credit union, right? Or in a financial institution. And it has its own identification. Oh, this goes this to one. All this will be identified this router number. Then Okay, it tells, okay, next what? Okay, it goes to that bank. Then it will be debiting this amount from this account. Okay, how many amount, how amount needs to be debited? $110, right? And 52 cents. And going to which account? It's up to the person who is depositing, right? I'm requesting deposit. The amount should come to me. That's how this check works, right? So this is the procedure for writing a check. So you have to remember when you have a checkbook or you can go to your mom's or dad's uh, bank checkbook and see if this is something, if you see any additional information, then um, just go Google it and figure it out what it is. It's really important. This is the very important information you should know about. So when you know information about, you know how to protect it, right? So it's you always, the awareness is very important, right? When you have a awareness, you know what to do. Right. If you don't know the awareness, it's very hard for you whether I need to protect it or not. Right. It depends. Right. So you should aware of it. So you should not disclose certain information. You have to keep these documents very confidential. You should not leave this checkbook where 
in a dining table and leave or in a in an area where it's not secured or in a public place you should not do that you have to always protect this is one of the important document it has four complete information about you right it has its bank account number which bank you are kind of things right they can do whatever they want it's very very important and it's your signature too right so this is check so we, we saw about check now we are going to talk about bank transfers right so bank transfer what is this when, you, when we, we talked about mobile bank right we talked about mobile bank right mobile banking where you can carry your mobile or it's uh, in other words wherever you go the bank follows right in other words right wherever you go bank follows through internet in your in your smart device whatever you have so you can transfer this to anybody right you can transfer to your friend or another organization or if you go to uh, maybe recurring payments to i'm i'm going dance on certain dates to this uh, dance institute where i wanted to pay i wanted to do a bank transfer or whatever means you can do so you can do this it's very simple from which account so you can say from which account to which account you are transferring how much amount and when do you want to transfer you can schedule it and leave it hey i will transfer you 20 dollars tomorrow then you can schedule now and leave it bank will transfer tomorrow it's easy you don't need to do it tomorrow morning you can do it now and schedule it so that's how the bank transfer it's a simple one click somebody's having any question uh, no worries Sampa, keep going I all right okay so and another thing is it's very important as you said in the previous slide right this is how the system predominantly we are doing right we are moving money from checking to savings for our future purposes so what happens is as warren buffett said right in one of the slide right so you cannot save after what you send spend expenses you have to expense after your savings right so technically that's how uh, you can become financially very stable person right so the good practice or the best practice is transfer the money what you have in your checking account to saving account transfer it okay every day every month first one through five i'm getting my pay then sixth day i will be transferring a certain amount for my emergency fund to savings account you can set up a recurring transfers so those are all the simple things you can do a best practices where it will make you simpler right it will make you financially stable okay so your account number recipient uh, bank details could be your bank account or others right anybody you can transfer to anybody all you have to transfer the bank so if you wanted to do a bank transfer you have to configure their bank details in your app or in your uh, uh, in your system in your in your account where you can initiate the transfer so that's how the bank transfer works quick time check okay so i'll be quickly moving to the other one all right so let me quickly show you the excuse me so i'm going to i'm going to quickly walk through other two few slides quickly so these are all the third party transfers you are talking about right so whenever you are having a bank bank provides a futures to pay bills bank will provide future to transfer between your account or to, to any other person right there are other third party apps today are become so fast right irrespective of bank or whatever it is people are having so handy it's called venmo zelly paypal kind of zelly is something it's integrated with in all most of the banks you can zelly me <coughs> excuse me it can say that okay go ahead and zelly me there is a new trend right like how to once google become famous they said okay go google it right initially people don't understand what is google it then over the period of time oh you go search in the google to find an answer that's called google it right you can zelly me you can you can then move me right that's how it is become famous these words have become nowadays so uh, uh casual today right which means that okay you can transfer to me right so that's how it is so they will show you if, if you see this picture right hey i wanted to try oh you have envo app they will give you a qr code just scan it it will say that, oh this is this is from mukund right okay let me transfer to you mukund so you can immediately click and send 20 dollars to mukund right away it will go to mukund within a fraction of less than 20 seconds the money will go immediately reach him so it's that fast right 
you can configure this with your email id or you can have your own id you can create and it will be so simple right zelly or uh, zellies are something like uh, okay you can configure with your phone number or you can configure with your email id so if you are having three different checking accounts you can give one to your phone number one phone number to your own bank another email id to another bank you can tell them you can transfer to my bank uh, email id this will go to the different bank because you configured set up in a such a way right the amount will go to the respective bank based on your transfer right paypal is one of the pioneer here right pioneer in the sense they started way ahead of everybody right they they do business to business right it's more than uh, zelly and uh, venmo venmo and zelly for uh, 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 for uh, all for our day to day activities whereas paypal is for commercial where organization can get collect the fees or you can pay through the paypal it's a one one uh, account where you can just configure it even though your back end system changes right it takes money from wherever you configure right so we are going to talk about this in the future uh, sessions if you are in interested but high level these are all the things you i just i wanted to touch base with you right so these are all the things that we planned right and um, so now let's get back to lakshmi right okay now lakshmi worked with megdi about a year right and uh, she got her first bonus right bonus means outside of what she is earning by by because of the people's working in uh, the megdi they made a few, a very good profit and the company is offering you some bonus that's called bonus is a additional money which you are getting outside of your, your annual income then lakshmi wants to to uh, deposit this in the bank right so now she has a mobile bank now she has a mobile right so how do we do it do i need to literally go to a bank to deposit this check or something right no so it's very easy right deposit a check is the one of the easiest thing right so you, you, even for the cash you have to go to atm or bank to withdraw money right but to deposit a check it's very easy you can do it from your couch right it's very very simple so that's how you get a check right so you you get a check it's very easy you would have to take a picture front and back and you have to before that you have to endorse your check in the reverse you get a check you turn you 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 get a check like this you turn it back there is a position called endorsement how many of you see it? there is a position called endorsement you just endorse here you will put your signature and take a print uh, take a picture of front and back if you go to the deposit section in your mobile app you can take a picture of uh the front and back and all you have to most of the time it recognize the amount in the check but if somebody is written in a such a way that it's hard to read then you can literally type it okay this is for 300 dollars right you can confirm and you can hit it so instead of 300 dollars you you put 3 3000 dollars you will get a query right please when you, when it comes to finance you always to make a very you have to be very ethical right you can say that, oh i can put 3000 i can put 30000 no you cannot do that you can you have because once you started doing this bank will mark you in a different way they know error clerical error how they will you will be in a profile differently it's very it's very important to build a genuine history for you that will is going to pay you back more in the future right so this is how you deposit a check depositing a check is one of the easiest thing in this finance right it's you can sit inside the, in, in the couch and you can do it all right so before i go to the next slide right i am is there okay this is a trivia time okay let's uh, okay there is a q and a we'll keep it lost okay so i'm stopping here it's a trivia time i am turning this back to uh, saranan saranan excellent 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 shankar thanks a lot There is Thank you. A lot of information. Um, so, friends, all the students, participants, I've sent you a link in the chat box. Please take a look, and and you can join the trivia. It's fun. It's just for fun. It's there is nothing, uh, you know, very complicated. And so, 
let's wait for a few seconds for the students to get on the trivia. I'll then get uh, have the have it started. Um, so let me share my screen so that you can see the past view. Can you see my screen? Yes, I hope you can. Yeah. All right. Um, shall we get started, everybody? So we have 15 students joined so far out of uh, 30 plus 35 participants, 16, 17, 18. So it's, it's just for fun, okay? So <laughs> don't be scared. I know you're not, but 20. It's, it's very simple. There are three questions. You will be seeing three questions in the um, trivia. And once I start it, I'm, let's, okay. So 20 out of 30, let's get started, 21. So get ready. You will be seeing the first question. All right, you, you have 20 seconds for this question to be answered. What's the best payment method for grocery stores? All right, you can see the response. All right, 86% people responded and credit and debit is the best, best answer. Oh, wow, Krishna, Ashwata, Akshay, Akshaya, Vijay and Medha got the first five places. Good job, guys. Next, next question. How do you log into mobile banking app? So you can select any answer that applies. So it really doesn't matter. You don't you don't have to choose everything, but just anything that you feel it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Eight more seconds, seven more seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. All right, responses. Two-factor authentication, user ID and password, biometrics, they're all good. 96%. Murugan, Akshaya, Vijay, Medha, Mahati. Good job, guys. Let's move on to the third question. How do you deposit a check given in your name? Eleven seconds, ten seconds, nine seconds, eight seconds. Wow, twenty-two people out of twenty-three answer already. That's good. Awesome. That's all. Let's see the leaderboard. Let's wait for the third. Yeah, ninety-one percent. All right. That's good. Final standing, you can see my screen for the final standing. Murugan, second point. Akshaya, first point, first 90, 69 points. Murugan, congratulations, second. And Meda, third, congratulations. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Let me stop sharing and back to you, Sampad. Awesome. That was really cool, guys. Um, seems like you guys are getting a hang of it. So we saw. Um, Shankar and will talk about checking account and saving account. How to, you know, if you want to spend money in a grocery store or send to a friend or send to your grandma in India, how can you do that? He talked about how to write a check, how to use, um, you know, how to do transfer, bank transfer. He talked about Venmo and all that, right? So now Lakshmi has been, you know, she's a student in UCI, University of California. She's a college student. She's been working part-time in McDonald's. She's making you know, $1,000 uh, a month. And then after working one year, McDonald's gave her $3,000 in bonus, right? So she's starting to slowly accumulate cash. She's starting to slowly get some money in her checking account. Remember Shankar we talked about checking account and saving account? So she has one checking account and she has one savings account, let's say in Bank of America. So slowly, in Bank of America, checking account and savings account, she continues to accumulate money. But what's the point of just keeping the money? You want the money to grow, right? How, and and, and which she, she went to Bank of America and she said, how much does the money grow? And they said it grows at 30 percentage interest. I'll explain what interest is in a minute, but they said it grows at 30.3 percentage. What does it mean? If she kept $100 at the end of the year, they would give her $100.30. So it, it grew by 30 cents, right? That's not a lot. That's only 30, you know, 30 cents, not even $30, right? So she's like, 
how can I make the money grow more? I'm, I'm earning this money. I'm putting it in a savings account, like Shankar Uncle said. I want to buy a car or I want to buy a big thing in the future. I want to keep it. But how do I make it grow faster? How do I get more interest? Interest is one. If you, if you keep a money in a certain place, they give you a little more money because you, you gave the money to them, right? So they are giving you, if you give them, if you give $100 to a bank, like Bank of America, they give you back $100 and 30 cents. And that 30 cents is called interest, right? Now she's thinking, how do I make the money grow faster? 30 cents over a year for $100, that's not enough. How can I make it grow faster? So she went to the bank and she started asking to the bank manager, I want, to, I want it to grow faster. I want it to grow more. How can I do that? She does have option, options, right? So thankfully, she does. It's not just, remember, Shankar Uncle talked about checking account and saving account. It's not just those two accounts. There is a few more options. What are those options? You have something called money market account, and you have something called certificate of deposit. I know these are complex terms. Let's take a look at what it is. So she got a salary. She put it in the checking account. Remember the checking account that Shankar Uncle talked about. And then in the checking account, she every month she's getting thousand dollars. And in her mind, she's thinking, oh, I, I only need to spend seven hundred dollars. I'm gonna save the three hundred dollars. So what does she do? She keeps transferring the three hundred dollars every month into the savings account. So just so just so I remind you guys, this is Shankar Uncle's slide, right? She gets thousand dollars income salary into the checking account, but every month she's transferring three hundred dollars into the saving account. So saving account is growing $300 to this month, $600 next month, $900 the next month. So it's so she continues to add $300 more. She's spending the other $700, but she's continuing to add this $300, right, in the saving account. But that saving account only gives her 30 percentage or 0.3 percentage interest. That's like very small. So the bank manager says, you may want to try a money market account. What does it mean? You can, you can save money. So remember, she's saving 300 per month, right? Second month, she has got 300 more, that's 600. Third month, she's got 300 more, she's got 900. Fourth month, she's got 300 more, 1,200. Now, she can go open a money market account. That's just another account within the same bank. It's a third account type, right? She opens an account type called money market account. What does it do? it offers her higher interest rate. That's 1.3 percentage. That's really cool, right? So if you give $100 to the bank, they give you back $101.30. So it's $1 more. I know it seems very small, but that's for $100. And if it is $1,000, it's $10 more, right? So she can earn more interest. She can more earn returns by storing money in a MMA or money market account, right? That seems super cool. And over time, she's thinking, that's not enough. What do I do? The bank manager says, if you save enough, you can actually open a certificate of deposit. That's again, another, another com complex word, right? But what does it mean? You can put more money. If you can save $1,000, you can put more money. And that will give you 3% interest. That's even better. If I give $100, they give back $103. So that's $3. So imagine this, right? Savings account gave you back 30 cents. Money market gave you $1.30. And then certificate of deposit gives you $3 more. If I put $100, it gives you $3 more. If I put $1,000, it gives, you me, gives me back $30. That's really cool, right? So why don't we put all the money in CD or certificate deposit? Why don't we put it? Because it, can, it, can, it is for a certain period. So they'll say, we'll give you 3% for three years you have to lock the money for three years and not touch it. If you put $1,000 and you can lock it for three years, they'll give you back 3% and you can get the $30 back for $1,000. What happens if I need the money? Hey, I have an emergency. I need to buy something. I need the $1,000 back. They'll put a penalty on you. So you, will, you have to pay penalty to take the money out. So think of this like a box, right? Like a safe box. You have to put $1,000 into that safe box, not even open that safe box for three years. And then after the three years, when you open the safe box, you get $1,000 and $30. $1,030. They give you $30 more. So it's really cool if you can afford to leave it for three, three years. 
these are example numbers, right? These are, you can do it for two years. You can do it for 18 months. You can do it for five years, different varieties. I just gave you one example. So, so a lot of things going on here. What do I do? The concept is when you get a salary, put it in the checking account. Sp spend from your checking account. Remember the debit card that Dr. Shankar will talk about, right? Use the debit card for day-to-day -day expenses and all that. As soon as you get the salary, move some money to savings. Always move some money to savings on a monthly basis. You have to save, right? You want to save money. You cannot spend all your salary on stuff. You want to be able to save every month. So that is savings account. Once you have enough to save, put it in money market account. Now remember, checking account, savings account, money market account, you can get money from all of this. Once you save enough and you are thinking, I've saved $3,000 that I don't need for three years, then go put it in certificate of deposit. Then you can earn more interest, right? So plan your life such that you keep some emergency, some money in checking account for day-to-day -day grocery, day-to-day -day gas and all that. Put money in savings for, for emergency. And then if you, if you save a certain amount of money, like $1,000, put it in money market so you can get more interest. If you can save enough money and you don't need, need it for like two years or three years, put it in CD, right? Does it make sense? So make sure your money works for you, right? If you put, if you have $100, it shouldn't stay as $100. It should actually work for you and get you $103. That's the way to make money work for you, right? So some complex terms there, but that's the general guidance. Make the money work for you. Now, she started saving and, and she has money in checking account and savings account and she has money market account and all that. She's not, she doesn't have a CD yet. You know, CD is certificate deposit, right? She doesn't have enough money, so no CD. But in the next one year, she'll save enough and she will, she will not need that money for two to three years or five years and then she can open a CD. She doesn't have a CD yet. Now, she gets a letter. And that letter says, hey, Lakshmi, you have a checking account with us. You have a um, savings account with us. And recently, you opened a money market account with us. We are going to give you a credit card. And we have pre-approved you for credit line up to $1,500. Lakshmi is super confused, right? What is this credit card? Shankar Angar didn't teach me about credit card. What is $1,500? What is credit line? This is super confusing, right? So she goes back to the bank and says, what is this letter? I got this letter from you. I don't understand this letter. And the bank manager says, you have a checking account. You have a savings account. You have a money market account. You can buy stuff from that. But we are also giving you a credit line. Credit line means like a loan. So if you need anything that, that, you, that you don't have money for, you can buy. So how does this that introduce us to credit cards, right? Debit cards and credit cards. I want to talk about the difference of a debit card and a credit card, and I'll show an example. Debit card is a card that, uh, that is linked to your bank account. Remember, Shankar Uncle talked about, say, checking account, right? Checking account, when she opened a checking account, I want to go back to that slide that Shankar Uncle showed. So when she opened a checking account, remember, he said debit card. When you open a checking account, they give you a card. And this is my card, right? You guys can see. This is my debit card. It actually says debit here, right? So debit card. That card, you can use it for buying groceries and things like that. But it is linked directly to your checking account. So if I have $1,000 in the checking account and I go to Walmart and I buy, buy something for $10, guess what? My checking account now became $9.90. Then I go to gas station and I put gas for another $40 and I check my mobile bank and it says now $9.50. Why? I just now spent $10 at Walmart and $40 at, at, the, at the gas station, right? So Debit cards, if you spend, they take money right away. You spend money gone, gone from your checking account right away. Whereas credit card is like a loan. The bank is saying, let's say Bank of America. Bank of America is saying, hey, Lakshmi, you've been a great, you've, you've been a very disciplined person. I want to loan you $1,500. I don't know what you want to use it for. But I give you a credit card. This is how the credit card looks, right? So you see the account number and my name and credit card. So we want to give you a credit card. Instead of buying every time for using a debit card, use a credit card. Now, if I go to the credit card, Lakshmi goes to the credit card, buys grocery in Walmart. 
for ten dollars. Guess what? That ten dollar is not gone from your savings account. It's a loan. Then she goes to a gas station. She puts gas um, for her dad. And guess what? That forty dollar is another loan, right? So she she's borrowed fifty dollar in the last one hour between Walmart and gas station. That's the difference between a debit, uh, debit and credit. I, I'll talk about credit in a little bit. So when you look at the cards, you almost see no difference, right? Both the cards look almost similar. One looks vertical, one looks, one looks horizontal, but that's not a real difference. It looks very similar. At the bottom of your debit card, it will, it will have written debit. That means you spend using this card, money is withdrawn right away from your bank account. You use, you use this card, in a, this is a credit card, you use this card in a grocery shop. This is the loans. The bank is giving you a loan. It is saying, I let you buy $10 worth of groceries in Walmart. You can pay me later. That's what the debit card is for, right? How does a debit card work? Why does the bank even do this? Why, why are they doing this? Why do they have to give a loan, right? If, you're a, if, you, are, if you have a disciplined finance, uh, uh, you know, uh, finance practice, the, the bank will give you a credit card. Their goal is, the first thing first, they are going to give you a credit card. The credit card comes to you like this. And then you can go to um, Walmart, buy for $10. You can go to the 7-Eleven uh, gas station, put for $40. And then guess what? 15 days later, you're going to get a receipt, like a letter that says, hey, Lakshmi, you bought groceries for $10 and gas for $40. You owe us fifty five zero fifty dollars. You get a letter or, a, or an email that says statement credit credit card statement. It's called credit card statement. You have two options now. You can say yeah yeah I did that. I bought groceries at the Walmart. I bought gas station. You can pay in full at the end of the month. Or you can say I don't have money. I I bought too much and I don't have money. I want to I want to pay it later. Now the bank will say, yeah, we knew you bought it. We're going to charge you interest for it. So even though I bought it for $50, if I pay it at the end of the month, I pay $50 back. But if I don't pay at the end of the month, I pay it three months later. Guess what? The $50 became $54. So you have to pay them an interest, kind of like a penalty, because you're paying late, right? So part of the part of this, part of the best practices. Use your credit card to buy, buy stuff, but pay it at the end of the month. In the next session on October, we October 22, we have another session. We'll talk about credit history. When you use a credit card, you're building credit history. I'll explain a lot more about credit history and credit score and all in that session. But if you guys are interested, go Google out. Go Google and see what is a credit score, what is a credit history, and how does credit card build your credit history? All of that you can Google and find out. But from, a, from this perspective, from this session perspective, bank is giving you a credit card, essentially a loan to buy stuff. You can use it at Walmart. You can use it at gas station. You get a statement. You pay that at the end of the month. If you don't pay at the end of the month, you have to pay more. This is called annual percentage, um, pass percentage rate. That means they, they can charge you up to 20 percentage. So if I bought for $100, I may have to pay $120 back. That's huge, right? You buy something for $100 and you have to pay them back at $120. Where did the $20 go? Interest. So you want to be careful. So why do I even need a credit card? What's the, what's the pros and cons? You can buy now and pay later. If you don't, if you, if, if Lakshmi wants to buy a phone, she doesn't have enough money, she can buy a phone using credit card and then pay when she has the money. Like I said, it builds a credit score. I won't explain this, this is complicated right now. I'll explain this in the next session. Some credit cards can give you freebies. For example, I have a Southwest credit card. If I, if I use the credit card more and more and more, I gather points. If I gather enough points, I get a free flight that I can use. Uh, Costco, if you use the Costco credit card, they give you points and then they, that's like a cash back. So some of these companies give you perks or freebies to use the credit card. What's the downside? Why should I, this sounds really cool. I should continuously use credit card. No, if you don't pay, you will be paying huge interest rates, high interest rate. Like I bought for $100. Uh, 
but I have to pay $120 back. There may be hidden fees. They may say, oh, $95 for this annual, annual fees, $100 for this and things like that. Also, if you're not careful, guess what happens? You keep spending and your loan or your debt increases very fast. So credit card is like a drug, right? If you want to be using carefully, use only what you need, use only what you can afford. If you don't, it builds up very quickly. So now there's another thing. You want to build, you want to re, pro, pro tip, you want to review your credit card build at the end of every month because there's a lot of fraud, frauds happening. What are the, what do these companies do? Fraudulent companies, small fraudulent people, they actually charge your credit card $50, $20 or $100. If you don't notice, you don't even notice. You think, oh yeah, I got the $100. No, somebody is charging you fraudulently. So you want to continuously see and say, what? Why is there a charge for uh, Walmart in uh, New York? I didn't even go to New York. That's a fraudulent charge. I want to report it back to the bank and, and get that out of, out of my statement. So you want to continuously look at what's going on with the credit card and make sure all, of, all the things you bought is really, all the things listed there is really things you actually bought, not like, not like a fraudulent activity. There's a lot of fraud, credit card fraud that can happen. So what's the best practice should I, oh, so here it's a credit card, right? High level. Just like, a, just like a check, here is how credit card looks. At the at the front, so before I go there, when you get a credit card, this is how it looks. You always want to make sure you sign the credit card. Um, do you know what happens if I don't sign the credit card? If I lose the credit card, somebody else can sign their own signature and start using it. So I buy, a, I have a credit card, if I forget it and I lose it without signing, somebody, Ajay can take that and Ajay can sign it and go to Walmart and Target and he can start buying and he can say, yeah, see, my signature is this. So as soon as you get a credit card, you want to sign it right away. So what are some of the things? Of course, your name is here, your expiry date is here. If you have a problem, you can have customer service, one 800 number that you can call. You want a signature and all that. The bank logo will be there. Like you see a Bank of America logo, right? You see the Bank of America logo. And then there's a couple of important things, the magnetic strip. So you see, this is the magnetic strip, right? On every credit card, you'll see a magnetic strip. Why? When you go to um, Walmart or Target or somewhere, you want to swipe. And that swipe is actually going through this magnetic strip. There is information in this magnetic strip. This swipe, this magnet, magnetic stripe, tells Target, oh, this belongs to Lakshmi, and this is her um, account number, you are welcome to take $50 from her account. So this stripe has all that information. Nowadays, some of the new cards have a chip, chip embedded in the credit card. So I'm bringing it here, you can see the chip, right? So that's a real chip. With COVID and all that, people didn't want to swipe. So if you just show, if you just tap it on top of the tip till, the checking checker checking uh, station the chip also has your information and then they can withdraw money from that um so that is so you can either swipe or you can tap using the chip and you can they'll take the money from your account and you can sign right they'll ask you for signature and then the 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 person at the checking check checking uh, uh, checkout station they're going to check all oh, your signature and then the signature at the back of the credit card matches, you're good to go. Four things. I am underlining four things, right? If you're going to buy something online, like an Amazon.com, um, or, or, you know, I go to Amazon.com and let you know, let me go to Amazon.com. She wants to buy socks. She has to enter the 16-digit number. She has to put her name. She has to put the expiry date. And then she has to put the CVC number. This is a confirmation number. This is a secret code, right? Uh, credit card, credit verification code. That's what it stands for. CVC stands for credit verification code. It's a secret code. You have to provide these four numbers only then for details. Only then they'll know, oh, I'm going to take this, this money from this account. Um, if you have a 16-digit code, but no expiry date, or if you have a 16-digit code, but no secret code, this three-digit code or four-digit code, you cannot make purchase online. So that's why if somebody took this number, if somebody has access to the number, if they don't get this secret code, they cannot buy on, on, on your behalf. So that's the, how the checking up 
credit card looks. What's the best practices of credit card? You want to buy spend carefully. Just because somebody gave you a fifteen hundred dollar loan, you don't want to buy everything in that fifteen hundred. Why? Because you have to pay at the end of the month. And if you don't pay, guess what? They're going to charge you twenty percentage interest. That's super costly. You don't want to do that. Unless you can buy something with cash, don't buy it. Every month you want to pay full balance. You want to pay on time. You don't want to look where you know miss the date. You want to pay on the due date, and you want to pay the full balance. It builds credit credit history. We we'll look at it next time. Your if your credit history builds, you can buy more stuff. You can get more loan in future. Also, you want to check if there is fraud happening in your account, right? Continuously check if there is fraud happening. If there is account that you know expenses that you don't know, call the credit card company and say, you know, there is. I see something in New York. Somebody went to Target in New York. I've never been to New York. That's a fraudulent activity. You can report, and they will take it out of your um, account. I want to go a little faster so we catch up on time. Now, she got a credit. She got the checking account, savings account, money market account. She got a credit card. She's growing, right? Her financial status is growing. Now she's at school, uh, college, and she's at work, McDonald's. She needs a car. She she got the driver's license. She's looking to buy a car, but she cannot buy a car. The car costs like twenty thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars, right? She needs money. What can she do? The credit card only fifteen hundred dollars. How can she buy a ten thousand dollar car? That's when loan comes into picture. What's a loan? A loan is something a bank or somebody gives to you for a specific need. You can be buy for for paying a college. So when you guys go to college, so us parents we you know we take loan for you as well. We take loan to buy a house. You can take loan to buy a car. That's what loan means. How does the loan work? When Lakshmi wants to buy a car for ten thousand dollar, she doesn't have enough money. She goes to a bank. Now she goes to Bank of America, let's say, and the bank looks at her and says, "Okay, Lakshmi, you have the you have a good financial practice. You have a good credit history. Credit history. We'll talk in the next session. I will give you a loan for ten thousand dollar. They'll give her ten thousand dollar. With that ten thousand dollar, she can go get a loan, a car. But she has to pay the loan back." Over a period of ten years, over a period of five years, right? They give a tenure for the loan. Every month, she has to pay a small amount. At the end of the ten years, she would have paid the whole loan back to the Bank of America. So after ten years, hey, I paid the whole loan back to Bank of America, but now you have actually paid them eleven thousand, eleven thousand and five hundred dollars. Hey, I only bought ten thousand dollars. Why am I paying fifteen hundred more? That's interest. Because they gave you a loan, you had to pay more. Remember the time when you didn't have money? They gave you a loan. They helped you to get a car, so you have to pay them interest. Interest is the extra money, extra amount of money that you have to pay for borrowing money. You only borrowed ten thousand dollar, but you have to pay fifteen hundred dollar more because they they gave you a loan at the right time when you needed it, and so you are paying them back every month. You are paying a little by little principal. But you're also paying interest. Principal goes towards the tenth of paying the ten thousand dollar. Interest is the penalty. Interest is the small amount you have to give them, and it slowly starts building up. Every month you are paying a big portion of principal, small portion of interest, and at the end of ten years you have paid eleven thousand five hundred. So that all sounds good. Can I take a lot of loan? Can I take loan for everything? Seems like somebody is giving money. I want to take a loan for car. I want to take a loan for this. I want to take a loan and put it in stock market. I want to take a loan and put it by by a by a watch, by an iPhone. Can I keep getting a lot of loan? That's not a good practice. You should not get a loan to invest. You should not make get a loan and put it in stock market because stock market can go down and then you owe owe the money back to the bank, right? You cannot use um you cannot use loan to pay monthly bill. Like a like a mortgage statement or or, or or anything, you have to be paying this from your own salary. You cannot take a you should not take a loan for entertainment like going to the movie or buying a big TV or Xbox. Not a good idea. When you cannot afford payment, you should not take a loan. Right, that's the basic principle. So that's this is the last section, right? And then we'll go to Q and A. Now with the savings, she got an iPhone. Remember, she wanted an iPhone. She got an iPhone. Now, um, 
she's worried she's going to break the iPhone. She bought an iPhone for nine hundred, six hundred dollars. I, you know, as iPhones are a little costly, but let's say six hundred dollars, right? She bought an iPhone for six hundred dollars. She's worried. What if I break it? What if I lose it? That's when insurance comes into picture. Insurance is something that protects you against a loss. A loss can be breaking or losing or, or you know, any of uh, theft. It can be any of that, right? If something goes wrong, the insurance company will pay you. There are insurance companies like uh, American Insurance. That's just one example, right? Progressive Insurance. Most of you have heard about Progressive Insurance, right? Let's take Progressive, for example. So if you lose your cell, uh, cell phone, Progressive Insurance will pay you back. Why? Why are they paying it back? How does this work? So that's the, those companies are called insurance companies. The example I gave, Progressive Insurance Company, that's one example. There's many insurance companies, but let's take Progressive Insurance Company, for example. So Lakshmi bought an expensive phone, iPhone for $600. She's worried. She buys an insurance policy. You have to buy a policy from the insurance company. And the insurance company will say, okay, Lakshmi, we are going to protect your iPhone. You bu you're buying a policy from us. What does it mean? Every month, you have to pay a premium for the policy. Premium is, is a keyword here, right? That's a new terminology. You, you, in order to protect your $600 iPhone, you have to pay $10 every month. That's, that's just a fee, a premium, a charge you have to pay to the insurance company. Now, few days later, she, she bought the policy. She keeps paying $10 every month. Six months later, the phone fell in water and then it, she's not working anymore. She can file a claim, right? Claim is a keyword, new keyword. She can file a claim to Progressive Insurance. She calls the Progressive Insurance and says, hey, I bought an insurance policy from you for my phone. Here's the insurance policy number. I've been paying premium every month for the last eight months. My phone fell into water. I need a replacement. She files a claim. And then the insurance company says, okay, Lakshmi, we got you. You have been paying premium for the last eight months. We are going to give you $600 back so you can go buy a new cell phone, right? So, so insurance is something that protects you from loss. You, you have to buy a policy. You have to pay a premium. And then every month, and then if something happens, some loss happens, they'll pay you back in bulk. So they can. So how does the insurance company do? They only make ten dollars a month for eight months, eighty dollars, but they give her six hundred dollars. That's a loss, right? Why do? How is this insurance company profitable? Because not everybody loses their cell phone. If hundred people buy this policy, only one of them loses their cell phone. Only one of them they'll pay six hundred dollars. Everybody else, all ninety nine other people, they are paying a premium, right? So they so the insurance company makes money. So it's, we used an example called cell phone, but not just cell phone. You can even insure your house. And we actually buy house insurance. We can even insure it your life. If something happens to your life, my wife, my wife and my children, they get the money back, right? So there's even life insurance, house insurance, rental insurance, car insurance. There's quite a lot of insurance, but we wanted to just introduce the concept of insurance for you. That's the last concept for this time. Like I said in the beginning, we didn't want to give a lot of information to you. We gave some information to you. So let's go to trivia. When the trivia is over, I want to talk about Q&A, and then I want to talk about what's coming in session two. Back to Sarun and Uncle. Thank you. That's a lot faster and a lot of concepts. Let me share my screen. So uh, participants, I've shared the link for your um, second part of the trivia. So please join. Again, same three, three questions, and it's going to take like flash of uh, 30 seconds of your time. Let's get through this. And then we can you know, quickly um, go over the question, uh, questions from the chat box. 17 people join, 18. And I know we are running a little bit late. Thanks for your patience because the, as I mentioned earlier, just for the sheer amount of you know, topics to be covered and you know, make, and also we are going a little bit slow and, and thank you Sampath and Shankar for taking it slow and they, you know, uh, telling them concepts one by one, terms one by one. All right, let's get started. Get ready for the first question. Which account produces the highest interest rate?
looks like everybody 1927 seconds six seconds all right everybody answered certificate of deposit is the right answer moving on to the next question okay congratulations ajay krishna mahati vijay and medha for securing the top 5 next question next question get ready for the next question how do you choose a credit card i'm sorry how do you use a credit card so these are important you know key learnings or takeaways from this session so uh, take a moment to answer excellent you got uh, so never buy anything that you cannot afford with cash all right that's the answer congratulations mahati vijay hasini chinmay and ragini for securing the first top 5 good job moving on to the next question we are googling answers <laughs> okay when should you get a loan play in a casino wow Buy a pet, getting by low, getting a loan. All right. Pretty much everybody answered. And the right answer is, given the given all the four, buying a home is uh, something that you can get a loan for that. Let's look at the final standings. Mahati, congratulations, Mahati, for being first, and Ajay for being second, and Ragini for being third. So let me stop sharing and back to you, Sampat. And good job, guys. Thank you. Yeah, good job, guys. Good job. You, you got happy to see all of you got the concepts right, right? So yeah. okay, good. Um, Saruman, can, can we walk through the questions? I'm happy to you can ask okay. the questions. All right. So let me go through the questions and um we have we can take you know we can time box it for, for let's say five minutes or four minutes, and then we also have uh, Vishali to deliver a small vote of thanks for everybody. So um Okay, so the first question is from. Um, it's we can start from seven uh, six twenty. Meda, uh, will these slides be shared with? Yes. The... Yeah, will these slides be shared with us at the end of the session? Yes, I think um, we can share. Right, some part, the after the second session is over, right? Yeah, we can share that. We, even this one, we can try to share. Um, we can share that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and also. Um, Oh, uh, as everybody know, this session will be published in our uh, so-called Tamil uh, YouTube channel. So we can come back and refer. Right. Um, and then uh, Prithvi has got a question. Are the limits set on a savings account created by yourself or by the bank based on the amount of money you have? So savings account. Um, okay. So to talk about at high level, I'll take 30 seconds here. So you need to know this banks happen to have the savings account, right? So this, when uh, Shampat uncle talked about insurance, this, our account is also insured. Our account is insured for $250,000. Every, it's not something you insured. It's the bank make sure they insure everybody. So it is recommended or advised to not to keep more than $250,000. So you can accumulate up to $250,000 in a savings account. That's a limit, right? But the withdrawal limit is limited by the bank. You can withdraw as much transaction you want, but after limit, you have to be, you have to pay charges like a $6 per transaction. Even if you transfer $3, they will charge you $6. So savings is only meant for savings, right? It has to be limited. All it needs to be remitted. But you can put money as much as you want, but it's recommended to put not more than $250,000. So when you reach that situation, you are rich. You can say yourself is rich, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, Prithvi, does it answer your question? If you are still there. Um... Yes, sir. All right, Prithvi, cool. Thank you, Senator. Um, moving on to the next question from Saravanavasan Ramadas. What are the benefits and consequences of mobile banking? How has the digital age affected banking? Yeah, I can take that. So mobile banking, you know, that's, you know, everything is in a mobile phone nowadays, right? So even your banking, your healthcare, everything is in a mobile phone. So 
previously before the online banking before the mobile banking anything we wanted to do we had to go to the bank you want to deposit a check we had to go to the bank we want to withdraw cash we want you want to transfer some money to somebody we had to go to the bank now mobile banking or online banking has made it really really easy everything can be done with a click of a button and all that now the downside is that can be risky right um you that's where the additional protections of we talked about two factor authentication the fingerprint or the biometrics and all that so they are also making the security because it is online because it is mobile banking people can hack into account right that is why the banks are also making it more and more secure in the last few years banking industry is one of the most secure industries heavy stringent security um that that you you know that you cannot hack into but people there are hackers who continue to invade into that as well so it's it's a constant thing you want to make sure you keep a password that is strong when you do a online account really strong you don't want to keep something like 7 and 1 2 3 you don't want that to be your password right you want to keep a strong password complex password so think about security very carefully as you as you start using the comfort of mobile banking thank you sampath uh sarvanavasan does it answer your question hope yes um all right um moving on to the next one um medha swarnachandra balaji are you writing the memo for the person or company you are writing the checks use or for the bank's use or for your use shankar you yeah the memo is for our purpose right so <laughs> it's uh, let me mute jivan yeah okay. okay so the memo is for our purpose when you are writing a check to somebody right you can give a check multiple times to the same person over the period of one year you can give multiple checks to same people right a kind of things right so you that memo is completely for your purpose where you know why you gave that money for right so you you may forget right after 6 months did i gave it to you yeah you gave it to me but for different purpose but if you refer the memo oh no no i gave it as for the pan office i gave it for the costco grocery you purchased so that memo is for you to make sure that you gave this money for somebody for this reason memo is for you cool thank you thank you shankar uh, meda i hope that answers your question moving on to next question from sarvana vasan are checks pretty much obsolete now yeah so checks we don't use checks as much as we used to use before when i first came to us i got a checkbook and we used to write everything through checkbook so the checks book checks are a little less needed now because of the venmo the zelle the bank transfer and all that but checks still exist we do use checkbook chankar ekal showed you an example of a checkbook right we do use checkbook so if you are sometimes if you don't have um you don't want this to you don't want to send the money right away you want to give it to somebody you can still use checks so we do use still checks it is not obsolete it's still being used but very less very less compared to 20 years ago all right i hope that answers the question uh next one uh thank you so much um from adi at what age i can open my own account and what age uh, basically open his own uh, checking account 18 you have to be 18 can i add to that shankar so you to open an account uh, in any bank account you have to be 18 but as a kid you can open a custodial account so uh, i took my son my son is only 9 years old right i took my son to bank of america and i opened a bank account for him but it's a custodial account so you, any any children parents can open an account but it is always linked to the back parent and it's called custodial account if a kid, if somebody wants to open their own account not a custodial account that you need to be 18 years old like dr uh, shankar uncle said right um thank you sampath adi Hope that answers your question and also um, many others question. Okay, Muthu Balu, is it safe to use online banking apps or other applications like Apple Wallet? How do we know it's safe to give them the information and they'll keep it private? Especially the question on Apple Wallet. Yeah, Shankar, we want to go ahead, sir. So you already yeah. answered the question. Yeah. Yeah. So. you know the banks are are regulated heavily right regulation that that means that the government regulations there's a lot of rules to make it secure so bank of america wells fargo chase they have a huge 
um, security team to make sure your bank account is safe, your online account is safe. So they do invest billions of dollars to make sure everything is safe. That's bank. And then there are other companies like Venmo, like Apple Wallet, right? You see these other companies that are coming in and you can sign up for it. You're sharing your account information with Apple Wallet. You're sharing your account information with Venmo. So you are doing that. You are taking a risk by sharing your account information like with Apple Wallet or Venmo or any of those things. It on one side you have convenience, but on the other side you do have the security risk. So some companies, so you wanna read through, so you wanna ask the question, before you share any account information with any company, before you share your account information with Apple Wallet, you want to ask the question, is it secure? How do I make, make sure my, my name, my account number and all the details, my zip code, all the important details is secure? How do I make sure it's not lost? Somebody cannot hack into it. You want to ask the question, you want to see, you want to research into the Apple website to make sure, is it secure? And then they will tell you, here is what we are doing to make it secure. And then if you're convinced, you can go use things like Apple Wallet. If you're not convinced, don't use smaller companies. Don't expose your account information into smaller companies because if you do, and if those smaller companies get hacked, they can take the money out of your uh, out of your bank account. So always be be cautious, be suspicious, right? Smaller smaller financial institutions. If there are smaller companies, you don't want to share your bank information with smaller companies. Um, so thank you, Sankar. Um, hope that answers your question. And next one is from Bala GRC. I believe that's from Bihan. What are the steps to open a minor account? Um, I think that's something that we answered. Is it? Um, that's yeah. that's the custodian approach, right? Okay. Maybe just parents can walk into the in a bank bank and say, yes. "I want to open an account for my son or daughter," and it's a custodial account. Okay. Thank you. And then the next one. Uh, from Meda, can banks use your checking account money to lend to other people or they will only use the savings account for lending so, to the bank? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you talk about checking account, um, mostly no, but saving accounts, yes. So let's go back to the example that Shankar uh, 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 gave, right? Hey, I want to buy a car. I want to buy a phone, right? Those are the things, right? So that's the loan amount, right? We are looking for. So normally what bank does is they will use your savings money, but we are depositing. So they are giving a 0.3 percentage, right? That's what the uncle told. So they are getting this interest, right? From the money they lend to others, right? They give a loan to others. So from our savings account, say if hundreds of people are putting money in the savings account, the money is huge, right? They will lend this money to somebody, right? That other person. It may be other person or other company. They will lend this money where they want to invest in a property or home buying or something. They will earn money from it and they, they will pour, they will pay a fraction of it, right? Yes. From our, from our money, they will be lending the money. Predominantly, savings account will be used for our, they will be using, bank will be using for their loans. Thank you, Shankar. Um, next one is from Ragini. Is there more than two types of account uh, than the checking and saving? I think yes. Um, the answer is yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. There is more than you, at, a, at a minimum, your first accounts should be checking and saving. That's the starting point. But there is more accounts. There is money market. We talked about certificate of deposit. You can have investment account, retirement account, student account. There's a lot of accounts. But the first minimum or the starting point is checking and savings accounts. Okay, yeah, yes. Um, and then the next question is from Meda again. Why do banks give you cash back rewards for using your debit card? Um, how does you use, uh, how does you using your debit card benefit your bank? Yeah, so credit cards, uh, sorry, companies are giving you cash back rewards. Mostly they won't give it for debit card. They yeah. give it back for credit cards, right? Right, right. So, yeah. so if I go to Costco, they say, oh, Sam, if you use this credit card for so much of buying over a period, over a period of a year, we'll give back 2% of that. So if I'm buying something for $100, seems like I only buy it for $98 because they give 2% back to me, right? So it looks like a discount. They, why are they doing this? Because they want you to buy 
even when you don't have money. Even when you don't have money to buy a big TV, they want you to buy a big TV. Even when you don't have money to buy an iPad, they want you to buy an iPad. So they want to want you to buy and buy and buy. That way, their their commerce, their their company will grow, right? So it's a so that is why you have to be very very careful before you use a credit card. Do not buy anything that you do not need. Do not buy anything that you cannot afford. So you have to be very careful. Now, how does using a debit card benefit your bank? Debit card doesn't really benefit the bank. Debit card is like a you know you swipe. It just takes, if you have thousand dollars, remember the fifty dollar, the ten dollar at Walmart and forty dollar at gas station. It just takes money away. It's just a way to take money from your uh, checking account. So debit card they do not benefit, but credit card they do benefit. How do they benefit? They are hoping you buy a big TV for two thousand dollars and you don't have money to pay back at the end of the month. What happens if you don't have, if you have, don't have money to pay at the end of the month? They can charge you interest. They can charge you very high interest, 20 percentage interest, right? So even though you bought a TV for $2,000, you may have to pay back $2,040 because they are charging you 20 percentage back. So that's the, that's how they make money. How does banks make money? They make money used by interest rates. So you want to be careful. You don't buy anything big. You cannot afford and, and pay the you, you know un unnecessary interest back to them. That's how they benefit. Thank you, Sampar. And the next one is from Ragini. What do can you do with your credit card when you get when you're using your credit card? I think we covered that. Um, the discipline and you know things to consider when you use your credit card. We have to be absolutely careful. And the next one is from Vijay. If I have a minor account and when I turn 18, can I change it to a regular checking account or do we have to open a new account? No, you can, you can convert into your uh, custodial account into a regular account. So because you are the, it's it's the process right that's how they want it right you can open account even it's if you if you are five year old or three year old or four year old as some parental said right so once you reach a state where you can manage account the custodian will be removed from it and you can have your own account yes okay thank you Sankar account thank you sampatha for Sarvan, you. Should quickly cover the next session and then yeah. we can go yeah. no that's all the questions from the chat box okay. let me yeah. quickly cover what's in the next session Sarona. yes please uh, Right. So this is a glimpse of the next session, right? Trailer, this, yeah. He's, so giving the, He's giving you a trailer. Uh -huh. Yeah. So what can you do? Go to bank, take away from the session, go to bank, open a checking account, a savings account, custodial account. You can learn more about credit card and loan. You may want to, you may have to take a student loan. You know, how does, these are some questions for you to think about, right? We'll, we'll share this deck. What are we going to do in session two? The session two is on October. Um, we are going to talk about budgeting. Budgeting is very, very important. What is budgeting? How do you budget? We're going to teach you power of compounding. I know that looks like a keyword, a complex keyword, but we're going to teach you power of compounding. Um, we're going to teach you what is credit history? How can you build a credit history? We're going to teach you about emergency fund. What is emergency fund? Why you should have it? Things like that. Welcome. You're, you guys are welcome to do some Google search on these terminologies, but we, we we hope you come to session two and learn some of these very important best practices. That sounds exciting. Thank you, Sampat. All right. Um, I would like to call upon. So we have come to the end of the session. It's there is. I know there is a lot of information and we have a lot of run through. And um, I would like to call upon Ms. Vishalakshi Nachiyapan. I'm sorry. I called when I introduced in the beginning in my agenda, I, I mentioned your sister's name, Valli. That's, I'm sorry about that. So it's Vishalai, Vishalak Shinachepan. And she is a junior in the University High uh, Irvine and also um, assistant teacher, volunteer in so-called Tamil Kalvi Irvine and one of the key uh, student volunteers in Thai. Thank you, Vishali. Please deliver a word of thanks. Thanks, Uncle. No problem. I'm also a sophomore. But um, hi, everyone. My name is Vishalak Shinachepan. First off, wow, what a session. I think the first time we ever did a personal finance session was like four or five years ago when Style first started. And it was like a group of like 10 kids and like, wow, the turnout today. I think the highest point today was about like 40 members that joined today's session. So it's a huge hit first off. Mm -hmm. And um, thanks, a huge thanks to Sampat Uncle and Shankar Uncle for giving today's session. I think it was actually very, very interactive because I've never seen you know, explaining 
personal finance at this such sort of level to make high school and middle school kids understand and like you guys said they don't teach us at school so it's pretty helpful when it comes to this like level to understanding personal finance and there's a part two of this too um and Sangipan uncle and Shankar uncle have spent a lot of their time in the community and for Soka Tamil and Shankar uncle being the ex Tamil Irvine Tamil Kavi uh, principal and Sampatanko being the ex Tamarka the vice president for Soka Tamil and a huge thanks to them and for all they do and for the next session too and Suhasini Sampat for helping them prepare the slides for today and uh, Mahati for introducing the chief guests today and thanks to everyone who's joined today the students the parents the volunteers and supports us today and for uh, Saturn Somo uncle and Prabhu Ishwaran uncle for asking me to give the vote of thanks today. This was actually a very interesting, I did not expect how fun this today's session would be. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to the second session on October 22nd, I believe. And then okay. last thing, uh, at the beginning of the session, uh, Saturn uncle gave, said about a quote about how, uh, uh, so like how um, wealth is an imper um, imperishable uh, light. And I think as the youth, we need to uh, keep doing that and moving forward. And thanks to everyone who joined today. And we hope to see you again on October 22nd for the part two of today's session. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let me start with the recording. Thank you, everyone.